All right, it's time for a sneak peek at the upcoming Centurial 2.0. I'm very excited about this. We've been working really hard on it. Let's dive right in. Number one, the most obvious change, brand new interface. Totally new look. Centurial 1 just has kind of a dated look. I want to kind of give it a refresher. It's been 10 years since version 1 came out, so it's just time for a new modernized look. And not only does it look really nice, but it also is resizable. So all of you folks who have asked for this, your wish has been granted. And we we made the resizability work like uh, like a synth plugin where everything gets bigger and smaller with the window. And one particular feature to the interface that I'm really excited about is in the synth, a new visualizer. This will actually show you what the envelopes and the LFO and the filter are doing in real time. You see this on most, you know, modern uh, synth plugins. But, you know, just to give you an example, here's the amp envelope. And you've got several different things you can see, but it's not always visible. This way, you still are encouraged to use your ear. But if you're a little confused with what's going on with the envelopes or LFOs, which many, you know, people who are learning synthesis are, it's totally normal. This is here to help. I'm really excited to have this in the synth. Now we've kind of added our own spin to this. We've added this sort of multicolored overlay, dynamic release, dynamic range, poly mode. So we've kind of done our own thing with it. And so I'm really excited about that. And we'll tell you more about that when 2.0 is released. We're also reshooting all of the videos. Now the curriculum is still gonna be the same. Still gonna go through the same content, same lessons, but all new videos. This has allowed me to kind of refine exactly how I'm teaching it with exactly what I'm saying. You know, it's been 10 years since I released Centurial One, almost 10 years, and I've learned so much since then. Now, I've really spent a lot of time on the on your owns. I start talking about more patch types. I'm talking about more subtle ways to use some of these settings, you know, because in Centurial, you know, all the different ways we use them are audible. They're easy to hear. That's how we train your ear. But sometimes when you're actually making, making patches, you do more refined things that sometimes are felt but not quite heard. So I talk a lot about that stuff, those finishing touches to your patches. And I gave you a big batch of patches for primer that you can then recreate in a synth of your choice. Next, randomizer mode. Really excited about this one. Go into any lesson, you'll see this option, launch randomizer. Every single lesson has this. What this does is it launches the challenge from that lesson. Let's look at group seven. And it's the same exact controls and it's the same task. You recreate the hidden patch. But instead of recreating patches that I made, you're gonna recreate ones that Centurial just randomly generates in the moment, meaning you can do an infinite practice on each challenge. So just hit start. Let's see what we get. And then you just go back and forth as usual. Recreate it, submit it. If you wanna do another one, hit next. It'll go on forever. This is great if you, you know, finish a lesson and you feel like you just need more practice. Or later on, if you wanna come back and review something, randomizer. Now, we spent a lot of time on this patch generator so that you would get actual playable patches, you know, not just totally random sounds, and really refined the algorithm and decided, you know, if, if we've got this cool random patch generator, why not give it to you guys in the standalone synth and primer? So that's what we did. You're now going to see at the bottom right these patch generator buttons, both here in the standalone synth and in primer, and they'll just randomly generate patches for you. Um, there's two different ones. They both kind of have a bit of a different approach to how they make the patches and thus kind of give you different sounding patches. We'll dive more into that when 2.0 is released. Next up, you know, one of the critiques we get for version one is that as you get deeper and deeper into Centurial and things get harder, they can kind of get tedious. There's just so many patches to recreate and it gets really hard. Sometimes it's hard, it's kind of hard to hear the differences. So what I wanted to do was sort of smooth it out a bit, allow you to kind of get through it in a more fluid manner, make it feel less tedious for some of you. But I also didn't want to, you know, compromise the quality, the amount of ear training and practice it makes you do. So we've done a number of changes. Number one, we created a group bonus. So every group, usually in version one, has six patches to recreate. A lot of you said that's just a lot, especially in the harder levels. So now you only have to do three patches in the group lesson before you move on. If you want to do more, there is now a bonus challenge to do the other three. So now it's up to you 
how much practice you want to do. And of course, even after the bonus challenge, if that's still not enough for you, you can do the randomizer. We also tweaked some fixed settings like, uh, you know, we got a lot of feedback about our filter release. The bottom two values were 150 and 375, very close to each other. And a lot of people were like, I just can't tell the difference. And there's a few spots where some of the settings were so close, it's just really subtle differences. So we moved some values around, like filter release is now 250 and 750. We removed some values from mod envelope amount. You know, we, we, we tweaked and consolidated some values in reverb mix. We just did all sorts of little tweaks like that to make it a bit easier to hear the differences between the settings while not compromising your ear training. You're still learning how to recognize what those value, what those parameters do. It's just a bit easier to tell the difference between the values that we give you. And then last, we really, uh, you know, improved and refined the scoring algorithm. A lot of the work was you know, behind the scenes, under the hood stuff. You should just get more accurate scoring in general. However, we also added a new scoring feature, which I'm very excited about. And that is orange. Let's close our table of contents and let's listen to the hidden patch. And I've gone ahead and already programmed the visible side. Let's hear that. Sounds pretty, pretty spot on. Let's submit. Okay, almost perfect. There's no red, but there's this one orange, which means it's wrong. And yet I still got three stars. What does this mean? When it's orange, it basically says, hey, technically you got this wrong, but the difference is probably so subtle that it doesn't matter. So let's listen to the difference. Here's mine. Theirs is a little lower. So I guess I can hear the difference. Mine is skewing a little brighter. It's so hard to hear with a random LFO, but mine does sound a little bit brighter. That's quite subtle. And I don't think, you know, it probably wouldn't really matter in a real life situation. So that's why we're not going to penalize you for that. When you see orange, that's what it means. Technically it's wrong, but it probably doesn't matter. So it's not going to hurt your score, but by setting it orange, we can still point it out to you. I still want you to try and hear the difference. It's still an opportunity to refine your ear. Lastly, we are going to do tutorial in multiple languages. You'll be able to change the language right up here in options language. There already is a Spanish version of tutorial, and we're going to consolidate that into here. When you change the language, it'll just change all the text on screen and add subtitles to the videos. Next, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do Japanese, and then I'm open to other languages. I'd like to hear from you guys what languages you'd like to see. And that's it. There's some other small tweaks throughout the app, um, but those are the big ones, and that's why I'm so excited about this. It's due out early next year. Yes, I know, for those of you who've been following, I've pushed the release date back several times. I just keep refining it and adding features and changing things, but I'm really happy with where we're at now. Just gotta reshoot all the videos and then gonna release it as soon as I possibly can. Thank <laughs> you.